Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave with Evil Eye Games. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and kick off a new tutorial series where we start building a third person shooter. So to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and do everybody's favorite and start with a PowerPoint show. So first off, who is this tutorial going to be targeted at? Mostly this series is going to be focused on beginners and people who are newer to the engine. So I'm going to start with some more basic concepts and ideas and we're going to progress from there. And I also want to go ahead and include newer individuals who want to know about how Unreal Engine 4 actually works in the background. So I'm definitely going to address things about the functioning of Unreal Engine and how it sort of works. I'm not going to go into super detail about it, but I'm going to explain general concepts and things that people using Unreal Engine 4 should generally know. Now, as far as what to expect for this series, the first thing is that I'm going to go ahead and make sure that all the content that we're going to be using is free. Of course, I included here the caveats that beggars can't be choosers and you get what you pay for, which should be expected. But it's something I just definitely want everybody to be aware of when we start. Because we only have a limited amount of resources, there's only going to be so much that we can actually do with those resources. I'm going to attempt to make the most of those resources and create the best end product that we can using what we have. Now, one thing I'd also like to address is that, no, I'm not going to be using Mixamo or alternative sources aside from Unreal's content. And there's a very specific reason for this. With Mixamo particularly, they were purchased by Adobe like a year, a year and a half ago or something like that. And honestly, we don't know what Adobe is going to end up doing with Mixamo. So if they end up starting to charge for content in the future and somebody comes back to watch this video, they're going to find out that resources that I'm pointing to and saying are free are no longer free. And I don't want that to happen. And with other sources as well, I don't really know if they're going to remain free. And the only way I can really guarantee this is by using the actual epic content that they provided. And for this series, I'm going to go ahead and use the build version 4.15. Specifically at the time of me recording this, the most current version is 4.15.1. And that's going to be important if you're coming back and watching this video sometime in the future. Epic is constantly updating Unreal Engine and there are going to be changes that are going to be made. Obviously, I can't account for any changes in the future, but it's something to be aware of that things might not be exactly the same as they are in this video. And I'm going to give you guys some advice in relation to this. When I was going to school for computer engineering and computer science, I got the same advice from a lot of my professors at the beginning of class. And that was learn how to use Google. Now, I'm not saying this to offload responsibility onto you guys, but the reality is when it comes to programming anything, one person can't memorize absolutely everything about a programming language or a game engine. When you look at Epic, for example, they have specific employees that cover specific parts of the engine. Now, those employees might have general knowledge of other parts of the engine as well, but for the most part, those employees work on very specific tasks within the engine. So when you get to something that you don't know about, knowing how to use Google is an absolute must. Epic has put up plenty of source material and documents for just about everything they have and any of the changes that they make. So if you're trying to do something and it doesn't show up the way that it does in the videos, the best course of action is to Google the name of the function or Google whatever you're trying to do and figure out if there's a newer version of that function. And learning to use Google in the professional world when it comes to technology is extremely useful. Now, these videos are also going to be shorter and more focused, so roughly 10 to 15 minutes in length. And that way, I'm going to go ahead and break down the design process and approach things in a very methodical manner and explain as much as I can about each portion of the process. So that's going to give you guys a better idea of how things work within the engine and also how to approach designing things when programming. So what are we going to do with this video series? Well, we're going to create a third-person shooter. And if you want to know what kind of target we're aiming for in general, 
it's going to be heavily inspired by the Mass Effect game series and the combat mode within Mass Effect. And I specifically mentioned the combat mode because I'm not going to deal with anything outside of the actual kind of combat system. And also we're going to have a weapon system that we're going to design from the ground up. And we're going to cover both what is known as instant hit weapons and projectile weapons. And I have instant hit in quotes here because there are actually a bunch of different names that is used to describe this mechanic. And it could be anything like instant hit, ray casting, line trace. But essentially, a instant hit weapon is going to deal with just calculating where a shot would go and applying damage appropriately. Whereas a projectile weapon system is going to create an actual something that's going to move through the space of the game engine and it is going to simulate this projectile moving. For quick reference, something like an assault rifle with bullets that travel faster than the eye can see is something that's going to be useful to use an instant hit system with. Whereas something with slower projectiles like a grenade launcher or a rocket launcher are going to use something like a projectile weapon. I'm also going to cover basic AI because we're going to need an enemy to shoot at. And we're also going to need a way to implement damage so that the weapons actually do something. Plus, when creating a basic AI, it's going to give me a chance to explain to you how the actual AI system within Unreal Engine actually functions. And it'll give a building block for creating more complex AI in the future. And one thing I want to highlight is that as I'm doing these videos, I'm going to focus a lot on methods of design choice and how to approach actually designing something within the game. So whether you're trying to create a weapon mechanic or a puzzle system or whatever you have, you have to be able to break down the task and approach that task to create the best solution possible for your use case. And one thing I would like to highlight is the fact that there is no such thing as a best method of doing something. There's always going to be multiple ways to accomplish a single task. And really the best solution is going to be whatever method that fits into your scenario and accomplishes what you need to accomplish with as little issues as possible. And of course, I want to focus as well on the fundamentals of Unreal Engine and how things actually kind of work underneath the hood. Like I said before, I'm not going to really go into depth to specifics of how they do it, but I want to address certain things of how Unreal Engine functions and things you need to keep in mind while designing within Unreal Engine. So if you guys have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and leave those down below. You can also go ahead and check out my Facebook page. I will leave a link in the description. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.